This is one of those questions that's really gonna split people down two different paths here. Some of you are gonna look at this and be like, oh, this is super easy and super obvious. It is definitely C, I don't even need to think about it, and you're gonna move on to question four. And I'll, I'll explain that, but like, yeah, that's kind of how this ideally will feel. But I get that even just the phrase infinitely many is going to put you know a lot of you on edge. And that's where the other path to this question comes in. Some of you don't even really understand what this is asking. And so it's just very conceptual and hard to understand. And so I'm gonna tell you the way that I try to think about these things because I think it makes it less conceptual and much more concrete. Basically, even though this is one equation, I see it as two. And that's because when they ask for the number of solutions, I'm basically kind of going down two other paths here. I'm either thinking, okay, I have a system or a couple of lines, or I have a system that involves a quadratic of some kind, a parabola and x squared. So if it's that kind of system, that's one thing. That's gonna be harder, it's gonna be a bigger, a bigger pain in the neck. But if it's just a system of lines, things are pretty straightforward because really only three things can happen. We can have exactly one solution, which is the most common situation. In fact, if you just randomly generated two linear equations, most of the time, like 99% of the time, they're gonna have one intersection point. They're just gonna cross and that's the end of it. There are two weird situations that can happen. Either they have zero uh, intersections, which happens when they are parallel, which happens when we have two lines with the same slope, and here's where it gets a little weird, is it's very similar when we have infinitely many uh, solutions, that's gonna happen when they are the exact same line. So yes, they will have the same slope, but they'll also have the same intercept, the same y-intercept, so the entire equation will be the same. And this is why I like to think of this one equation that they gave me as two separate equations. So I just chop it down the middle, right, pretend the equals isn't there, and set it up as two y equals equations. So the one on the left is just y equals 66x. And the one on the right is also just y equals 66x. So these two equations are the exact same equation, and that's how I know they are the same line, meaning they're gonna intersect at every single point because they are gonna be graphed in the exact same way and overlap at every single point. This is still a little weird and annoying, but the SAT really likes this, this topic, this the conceptual idea of when you have an equation, can you tell how many solutions or intersections it's going to have? So you do need to get comfortable with this idea. The one thing I will say that makes it a little easy is no matter what, we're never gonna have two solutions. That's not possible when you have lines because lines don't curve. That can happen if we have an x squared, if we have a quadratic, because a parabola is going to curve and there are situations where you might get two uh, solutions or intersections. So we'll get to that probably in another question in this section. But for this, yeah, hopefully you can get to a point where you just know that because the two sides are exactly the same, it's going to have infinitely many solutions. Um, if not, then it's just do what I do. Think of it as two separate lines and try to break it down into y equals mx plus b and then compare. So the fact that they're both sides give me a y equals mx plus b with a slope of 66 and a y-intercept of zero, that tells me that these are the exact same equation, therefore they're going to have infinitely many solutions. It's confusing, but gettable with practice.